Welcome to the Common Man Football Show, and today's episode is the Indianapolis Colts draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, Malik Hooker, defensive safety out of Ohio State. Uh, the first place I would start is with athleticism, oh, not athleticism because he didn't test at all, but with production. Uh, he scored 66.26 in terms of solo tackle market share, 91.23 when it comes to interception market share, and 82.98 when it comes to his uh, pass deflection market share. Uh, when you look at him compared to free safeties, the solo tackle market share doesn't really hit high quality outcomes. Uh, the interception market share hits high quality outcomes. And then the tackle for loss, not tackle for loss, excuse me, pass deflection market share uh, doesn't really hit uh, super, super high quality, you know, outcomes. Um, the positives, though, with him is age-wise, he scored 98.55 when it comes to his age score. And, but again, my, my only issue with Hooker from a data perspective is that he didn't hit elite marks as a free safety when it comes to his production overall. And he didn't do any testing. You know, he didn't do explosion testing, speed testing, or flexibility testing uh, because he was injured during the process. So that kind of clouds the overall projection with him. I think best case scenario, you have a starter with some potential to become a pro bowler based on his age and some of the unknowns in his profile. Uh, but I think that's, a again, I think it's a bit of a stretch. Based on what I have before me right now, based on his production, based on his age, if those are the only things that I can actually judge and grade, I would say best, the best case, or at least the likely case, is that he becomes a starter. But in terms of high quality outcomes, Pro Bowl, All Pro aspirations, All Pro stuff, I think is off the table for him when it comes to his production profile. Pro Bowl stuff is somewhat off the table as well when it comes to his production profile. And I just think he's a guy that could be somewhat of a disappointment. Uh, due to some of the things missing in his profile when it comes to his production and when it comes to his athleticism because he didn't test. Then we get to the next pick of the draft, uh, Quincy Wilson, cornerback out of Florida. Uh, when it comes to his production, he scored 19.39 in terms of solo tackle market share, 63.98 when it comes to pass deflection market share. And these are the big issues when it comes to his profile is with production. Uh, he The solo tackle market share didn't hit Pro Bowl level, and his pass deflection market share didn't hit the Pro Bowl slash All Pro level either. So he basically fails two big metrics when it comes to his production. But there is some hope in his age. He was 99.41 when it came to his age score, which is he's one of the youngest cornerbacks to come out in the last 20 years. And sometimes cornerbacks that are that young end up being starters despite the fact or end up being a little bit better uh, than what their production suggested when they came out. Um, so he has that going for him at least. And then when you get to his athleticism, he scored 51.88 when it comes to explosiveness, 68.36 when it comes to speed, and 92.23 when it comes to flexibility for his size. From an athletic standpoint, I would say the best comparison for Quincy Wilson is Sean Smith. When you take into account Sean Smith having... Um, significant arm length, similar explosiveness, similar speed, and similar flexibility. I think that's the type of player you might see. And Sean Smith also in the fact that he can be a bit, a bit of a disappointment as well. Um, but I think, again, overall upside for him is Sean Smith. Uh, so that's not the most popular name to hear, of course. But I just think that that's kind of what you're looking at with Quincy Wilson when it comes to his production and when it comes to his athleticism. Um, he is an elite when it comes to his athletic traits. And he is an elite when it comes to his production traits or even a provable level. Uh, so this is another pick that I think may disappoint some people when it's all said and done because he misses those important factors when it comes to his production and when it comes to his athleticism. Uh, then the next pick on the on the board, we have Terrell Besham, uh, defensive end out of Ohio. When it comes to his production, he scored 53.89. When it comes to solo tackle market share, 64.82. When it comes to sack market share, at 56.03 when it comes to his tackle for loss market share. For his level of competition, that's not good. Uh, he played MAC competition. And uh, sure, and I'm not saying that he never had one game where he didn't play a, a high quality team. But what I am saying is that he has he didn't hit Pro Bowl level when it comes to solo tackle market share. Uh, he 
didn't really hit high quality outcomes when it comes to sack market share, and he didn't hit high quality outcomes with ter- when it comes to tackle for loss market share. He's also old. He scored 53.54 when it comes to his age score. So there's there's not a lot of positives here when it comes to his profile from a production standpoint. Um, so it's and and then it adds to the no, another fact that as an athlete he's pretty good. I mean he uh, in terms of athleticism he he had 64.39 in terms of explosiveness, 87.12 when it comes to speed, and 81.13 when it comes to flexibility for his size. So he is a good athlete. He's an above average athlete with near elite speed, near elite flexibility. Uh, but when you look at his profile, how could a guy that's this athletic not be more productive in the MAC? You know, so that's a that's a legit question. That's a legit fear with him uh, is that lack of production for Terrell Basham in the MAC. Uh, then the next pick, we have offensive tackle Zach Boehner uh, from USC. This is probably my least favorite pick, guys. So I'm sorry that the, that the draft has gone this way for you guys from a data perspective. Uh, but in terms of his athleticism, he scored 27.81 in explosiveness, 28.23 in terms of speed, and 15.51 when it comes to flexibility for his size. Uh, there are not a lot. There, there's pretty much no high quality outcomes when it comes to this athletic profile skill set. And on top of that, it's it's not a very good combination when it comes to the fact that you're below average explosive, you're below average fast, and you're also significantly below average when it comes to flexibility for your size. That's not a good combination. And this isn't a sort of issue that you can just solve by sticking him inside either because he's huge. He's over six foot eight, you know, for crying out loud. Uh, so this is not a guy that you just stick at guard and then hope good things happen. Um, this is somebody that I think is just not functionally athletic enough to be a high quality tackle or to be a guy that you want to be a tackle for you because he just isn't functionally athletic. I mean, I know offensive line coaches hate this and they get on to me over saying these types of things, but the data speaks for itself. If you just look at the thresholds when it comes to athleticism and you look at how he tested as an athlete, he fails to meet the basic thresholds when it comes to successful offensive tackles and um that that's an issue so uh so unfortunately zach banner happens to be one of your first guys that i i can say is not really in a good place in terms of his uh, athleticism testing so you know to become a to become much of anything so then the next pick we get to marlon mack running back out of south florida when it comes to his production he scored 69.98 when it comes to his uh uh, total rushing market, you know, market share. Uh, then we get to his athleticism. He scored 78.09 in terms of explosiveness, 76.15 when it comes to speed, and he did not participate in the short show and three cone to determine his flexibility for his size. So positives, though. Uh, Marlon Mack has the profile of a player who could be a potential Pro Bowl player. Uh, his athleticism is kind of where it needs to be, explos- explosiveness wise and speed wise. The fact that he didn't do flexibility testing is a bit worrisome to me uh, because there are things attached to the three cone when it comes to high quality outcomes. For example, uh, the vast majority, 90 plus percent of every single multiple all pro and pro bowl running back since the 1999 NFL draft class at least had 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 at least a 7.09 three cone. Uh, We don't know what max three cone is. So there's a lot of questions in terms of like just how good he can be because there's not enough data to really say whether he could be a high quality player. But just from a production standpoint and an athleticism standpoint, the one thing I could say is there is potential for him to become a starter here, but I don't really want to project more than that because there just isn't enough things in his data to suggest anything other than just a starter based on his production and based on the athletic traits that he was able to show. Uh, so that's basically my general view when it comes to Marlon Mack from a data perspective. Uh, then we get to the next pick of the draft, Grover Stewart, uh, defensive tackle. And uh, in terms of his production, he scored 96.30 in terms of solo tackle market share, 95.42 when it comes to sack market share, and 93.14 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. But unfortunately, his age score is 18.16. Uh, there hasn't been a multiple all pro, multiple defensive tackle since the 1996 NFL draft class with the age score that's that low. 
Uh, Athleticism-wise, there are some positives here, though. I mean, he scored 86.15 in explosiveness, 92.27 in terms of speed, and 90.14 when it comes to flexibility for his size. I think the best-case scenario for him is that he can become a long-term starter as a 3-4 defensive end, which I, I think is what they might be doing with him. Uh, but I think when it comes to high quality outcomes, those things are just off the table uh, because unfortunately because of his age and because of the fact that his production is very high, but it's against a lower level division competition. Uh, the hit rate is just not where it needs to be when it comes to the FCS level, especially for a guy at his age when it comes to entering the draft. So I, I would say this is a good pick if you're talking about a guy to become a long term starter, but I don't necessarily think that this is a pick that's going to end up being like a pro bowl or all pro level guy because it just doesn't happen that often with these types of guys who come from that level of competition and especially when they're this old coming from that level of competition so we get to the next pick of the draft with them and nate harston cornerback out of temple uh, when it comes to his production he scored 14.57 in terms of solo tackle market share 24.90 when it comes to pass deflection market share uh, both of those marks don't hit the solo tackle or pass deflection thresholds necessary for a pro bowl or all pro player. And then on top of that, when you look at his athleticism, he scored 49.86 in terms of explosiveness, 53.33 when it comes to speed, and 47.98 when it comes to flexibility for his size. So he's an average athlete with below average production. I don't think you need to put two and two together <laughs> to kind of determine what that's going to end up be. I would say best case scenario backup uh, player, but again, I don't like teams that take backups just to become backups, and that's just what this pick stinks of to me. Uh, so uh, I, would, I would say that isn't the best pick for the Colts. And then the final pick of the draft for the Colts, probably my, my favorite value pick for them is Quincy Walker Jr. from uh, Northwestern. In terms of his production, he scored 88.20 when it comes to his uh, solo tackle market share. That's Pro Bowl level solo tackle market share compared to uh, every other linebacker since the 1996 NFL draft class. Every Pro Bowler had at least 77 or higher. And every All Pro guy had at least 91 or higher when it came to the solo tackle market share metric. And Walker's in a good place. He's in the Pro Bowl level. Uh, his issue really is just athleticism. Uh, he scored 33.74 in terms of explosiveness, 75.28 in terms of speed, and 60.8 in terms of flexibility for his size. He just didn't hit the high quality outcomes when it comes to explosiveness. He didn't hit all. He didn't hit all pro level. He didn't hit pro bowl level when it came to explosiveness for his size, explosive lower body strength. Uh, so he had, but he has some positives though. That production is very good. 88.20 is nothing to sneeze at. And then you add in the fact that he does have above average speed and he does have above average flexibility. I think that Anthony Walker is going to be a guy that might actually surprise some people. I think best case scenario, you have a long-term starter linebacker. So a lot of teams shy away from linebackers for odd reasons at times, testing wise, uh, when they don't realize that it's, you know, you don't need to be an elite athlete to be a starting linebacker in the NFL. And I think that's the case with Anthony Walker. I think he's going to be a long-term starting linebacker. He just is never really going to be elite. Uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you got him as late as you got him. So uh, I think it's, it's a good value pick, and I think there's going to be some good things with him long-term. So I think that's a good pick, one of, your, one of the better picks of the Colts. Uh, so to wrap it all up, um, how do I feel about this Colts draft? From a data perspective, not from how I felt about them on film or, you know, uh, what my draft board was. How do they look when it comes to the data? The most objective thing there is when it comes to draft evaluation. And based on the data, they did kind of all right. You know, they didn't do incredible. Uh, guys like Malik Hooker has some potential to be a pro bowler, but that potential is stuff where there's no evidence to really prove that he has the potential to be a, a, a very special player because there's no athletic testing to, to back up that claim. Uh, there are some other guys that could be potential starters like Quincy Wilson. Uh, Terrell Basham could potentially be a starter based on his athleticism. Marlon Mack could be a potential starter based on his production and athleticism. Grover Stewart could be a starter based on his uh, athleticism. And Anthony Walker Jr. could be a starter based on his athleticism, based on his production. Uh, so I think those six picks 
if they become starters, because they do have somewhat of a high chance of becoming starters based on certain metrics like production and athleticism, uh, I think those are picks that are decent. You didn't get any high quality players though. Again, confirmed high quality players. Players that based on previous players, they fit all those players. They check all the boxes. You didn't take any player who checks all the boxes of a high quality player based on all the previous high quality players. But what you did take is at least six players with good possibilities who check most of the boxes off when it comes to starting players. So if you view the draft that way, it's not the worst. But they could have done a little bit better. They could have got some better value. They could have picked some better players in spots that they picked. And I don't necessarily think this draft class really fixes some of the really, really important needs that this team has when it comes to uh, some offensive line problems. Uh, defense could use some fresh blood. So, you know, uh, they added some guys, but I, I, I think they could have done better. But, you know, that's just my general feelings about the Colts draft and from a data perspective. is I think from a data perspective, they did okay, but they could have done better. So... Uh, again, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. Uh, you can also find my work at Geometrics on Twitter. And yeah, if you like this content, you want more content like this, uh, feel free to uh, like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below also if you have any questions about data. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.